With the weather warming up, you could see kids playing in bounce houses, but there are dangers. Yes, there are. Tonight in the Target 7 investigation, we're learning not everyone who sets up these inflatables are operating under the letter of the law, and they're putting your children at risk. Here's Faithy Buanu. This is John Thomas's worst nightmare. Well, that's always in my mind. This is a video from a bounce house that tipped over when wind gusts tore into it at Washington State High School in 2019. Five teenagers were injured. I mean, that one just keeps you up at night. Although rare, it's tragic. The biggest things that I stress in the briefing are the wind. Um, you know, 15 miles an hour is your hard limit and is way better to, to uh, disappoint than harm. This is the aftermath when six children were killed in Australia in 2021, and a two-year-old lost his life in this Nebraska accident in 2018. This right here is a, a, a watchdog. It just monitors pressure and power so that during the event, um, you know, parties are uh, special events, 24-inch stakes, uh, they're uh, 5 8 inch. I recommend 70 pound sandbags if you're on sandbags and then again back, you know, just the, the cones to mark off safety and hazard areas. John Thomas owns one of seven companies that is approved to operate jumpers in the city of Albuquerque. Under New Mexico law, he has to have insurance, a license with the state, and all of his equipment must be inspected every year. There is always an issue for injuries. Herman Shorty is one of a handful of inspectors who take a look at every legally operated bounce house in New Mexico. You sometimes you'll have a, you'll identify in a slide, maybe a worn liner, and the worn liner has a, a tear in it which would provide you know, an imminent hazard for a foot getting caught in as, as, as a child goes down or someone going down. Shorty says not everyone is getting inspections. He says there are companies that operate all over the states without a license, and it's hard to know how many are out there. There's no, nobody collecting the data or specific to uh, how, how many operators there are, how many of those operators are abiding in compliance with the requirements for uh, uh, the state. I have to admit to, to myself that the you know myself that the first eight months I operated I did not have a, a license from the state. Thomas says he believes another company saw him in a park and called the state's regulation and licensing department. You know when the state called and said hey man you know, you're operating without a license. We need you to take care of this. You know, I, d I did it immediately. State officials tell Target 7 that it's hard to enforce illegal operators. They say they operate, quote, under the radar and they rely on reports from the public. The regulation and license department does have the authority to shut those businesses down. I was, I was out doing what I was doing. And I think that's probably um, the, the main mechanism for enforcement here is just other operators, you know, letting, letting the state know that, that guys are, are going. In Albuquerque, they require all bounce house operators to have a permit. They only allow them to set up at these 21 parks and in designated areas. For Target 7, I'm Faith Buanu. State officials recommend that people who rent bounce houses ask for proof of their license with the state. That way they can ensure the equipment has gone through the proper inspections. You can see a list of the city approved operators by going to KOAT.com and click on Target 7. If you have tips for Target 7, call the Target 7 tip line 505-884-6347 or email newstips at KOAT.com. <laughs>